G'day, in this video I'm going to tell you one of the most, I think, amazing things that plants can do in our soil and contribute to our soil, and that is effectively root extradites. So just before filming, I pulled out this weed out of my garden, and you can see here there's a lot of soil clumped to the roots. And this is effectively what we will be talking about today. And really, this is the rhizosphere, which is caused by um, the plant extradating these root extradates. The classic sign of this are these are these dreadlock type structures on the roots. And in a moment, you'll understand exactly why they are so important to our soil and to the functioning of our plants and microbes. Before we get into that, my name is Till Simmons. I run this channel, Agriculture Explained. Um, I teach a bunch of agricultural and regenerative agricultural stuff that I've learned at uni and school from all the experience I've, um, I've gained on farms. If you enjoy this content, make sure to subscribe so that I can share with you all this knowledge. It's completely free because I just want to help you learn more about agriculture. On top of that, I've produced a free course. Uh, it's the Soil Organic Masterclass or, or course. It's completely free on our website. Go check it out. Um, share it with a friend if you like it. So let's start right at the beginning. Plants photosynthesize, they take carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and they fix it into sugars. We know that and I made a video about it um, in the past, so go check that out if you want to understand more of that. But once those plants have the sugars, what do they do with them? Well, effectively they can either put that towards growth, they can put that towards metabolism, so actually just living. Um, they can also put that towards um, I think reproduction, so flowers and, and fruit. And the other area that they can put that is back into the soil via root extradates. So plants will fix um, sugar or, or carbon into sugar or photosynthates. And then what they will do is push that out through their roots. And it, it's suggested that up to 40% of the root uh, of um, plant photosynthates or the sugars that a plant produces can be um, released through its roots. Now, of course, that's not going to happen in, in a lot of plants and in a lot of soils, and that's probably the upper end, and it's probably more like 25%. But there's big potential for us to fix carbon with this process. And so what happens is, wherever here, the plant produces a whole range of different compounds, uh, mostly sugars, but we also have lipids, which are effectively fats, um, or that sugars, amino acids, which are uh, building blocks, blocks of proteins, Secondary plant metabolites, these are all our, um, I think, flavonoids, like really special components. Um, a lot of signaling uh, components in there, auto inducers, a whole range of different things. Plant hormones and microbial hormones as well, and enzymes. And they make up what the plant um, releases through its roots as almost like a, a fluid, um, like a sugary fluid, really, into the soil environment. And that's effectively what root extradates are. They're just all these compounds, a lot of sugars being uh, pushed out the root tip into our soil. But the reason why our plants are doing this is a super complex interaction between our microbes and our plants. And there's a lot of benefits that our plants get from this interaction. But simply what it is, is our microbes really benefit from this source of carbon. So it's food for them. Similar to us eating um, fruits and veggies, root extradates are the food for microbes, or a lot of microbes at least. Others decompose things, but this is a massive source of microbial nutrients. But in exchange for these sugars, microbes will give back the plant something that the plant wants. This can be nutrients, so minerals that the plant currently doesn't have access to. It could be water. It could be um, hormones or uh, defense um, or defense uh, compounds. It could also just be building up that population of microbes to defend itself, uh, to defend the plant against other microbes or pathogens. And so in on the root tip, there's a mass concentration of um, microbes. And we can remember going back to our plant here, this effectively is these dreadlocks hanging around the plant there. They, that is what's called the rhizosphere. And there's a mass concentration of microbes. It's extremely microbially active, and the plants get a whole range of these benefits. So one of the big benefits that we can get with this cycle, or with this system, is the buildup of mycorrhizal fungi. Now, mycorrhizal fungi has a range of different benefits. Um, one of them is increasing the amount of available water to our plant. Not so much because it just randomly makes more water, but because the plant can actually access 
more water by tapping into these mycorrhizal fungi hyphes. Now these hyphes are a lot smaller than our plant roots and they can go between our soil particles and access water the plant wouldn't be able to access otherwise. And so the mycorrhizal fungi will go in between these really small soil particles, extract the water and then give them back to our plant in exchange for some carbon um, or, or food effectively. The same thing happens with our microbes or some of our bacteria. The plant can tell somehow the plant can tell the bacteria to go to go get a particular mineral. So the plant might say, I want phosphorus, go get me phosphorus. I'll give you phosphorus if you give. I'll give you some sugar if you give me some phosphorus. Effectively, the microbes will go mine soil uh, particles in search of phosphorus and then come back and exchange it with our plant. Now this is now, this is well documented in uh, scientific literature. There's a really interesting paper um, about the rhizophagy cycle, which is where effectively we have this set up, but the microbes are eaten by our plant root. And so they go into our plant root, the microbe gets stripped of its um, soil membrane and then released back into the soil environment by the root hair. And so this is a very complicated system of you know plants and um, microbes and the interactions that they have. But it's super important for deliverance of different uh, nutrients without applying fertilizer and reducing our, the stress that our plants experience. Now there's some other functions that microbes um, contribute to our plants and they can be auto inducers, so signaling hormone, uh, signaling uh, compounds, as well as hormones, which are also signaling um, compounds. It can be defense um, compounds. There's a whole range of different things that microbes then give back to our plants in exchange for this sh sugar. Some plants can also release this different enzymes. So uh, buckwheat, for example, releases an enzyme that degrades or uh, makes phosphorus more available. And so when we think of this as almost like root architecture and the function that different plants have on our soil environment, different plants effectively contribute different things to our microbes and our soil. So for example, if you're putting together a cover crop, you want to be thinking about the root extradates or the variety of root extradates that our plants are going to be contributing to our microbes and to our soil. Because different plants have a different almost uh, root extradate profile that have different concentrations of these components, that have different secondary plant metabolites, that have different gene expressions. A lot of this is dependent on gene expression, which is also dependent on the microbes that are there and how active they are. Now, if you watched our types of soil organic carbon um, video, you'll notice that root extradates is one of our um, dissolved soil organic carbons. Um, effectively, this is our biggest source of dissolved soil organic carbon, um, and it's, it's these extradates. There's a whole lot more that we can go into with these root extradates, and this is a bit more of a introductory video. So if you want me to deep dive deeper into root extradates, just let me know, and I can produce some more videos on that. So thanks very much for watching. If you found that helpful, and I think a lot of the times in scientific literature, there's a lot of jargon, so hopefully I've been able to clear that up for you. Remember, we've got a whole course on soil organic carbon, um, so if you want to see how this process directly contributes to building soil organic carbon, just go watch it, it's free, there's no opt-ins on our website, go enjoy it. Um, otherwise, thanks for watching, cheers.